Go find your Microsoft mouse from 30 years ago. It still works. Mm-hmm. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another weekly Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Old Man Vin, joined by Jill Bryant. Hello, hello. Streaming live right here on Twitch. Big show for you today. Kind of big. Actually, we're going to talk about how Linux has embarrassed um, Windows 11, but not in the traditional way. Not, yeah. Not quite. Something that you might not expect. Debian's <laughs> getting old like us. OBS with NDI6 did a thing for that. And it's not clickbait. $50 Raspberry Pi 5s from Raspberry Pi, not from like Sam, the Raspberry Pi dealer in the parking lot that you met with <laughs> one time that we don't talk about. But what's up? What's new? <laughs> Jill Bryant, you're back. We Aww. had Turbo last week. I want to thank Turbo Tree Sloth. You yeah. might know him. Michael. He showed up, came in, and I'm like, Good opportunity. Let's talk about Control Plus Revise. Got some feedback. I saw some people in Discord move over to his Discord, help him out. He's got some bug reports coming in. Love to see That's it. Awesome. Thanks again, Turbo, for popping in and telling us about your project. What have you been up to, Joe? Oh, boy. So I was supposed to have a nice vacation last week, but instead I ended up getting a bit sick. I had a stomach bug. So that wasn't fun. So I had to cancel my my plans and I missed LWW, but I just wasn't feeling up to doing anything. And um, except I, I did when I started feeling better, I did start playing Genshin Impact uh, quite a bit because <laughs> I had really nothing else to do. <laughs> so sit, except sit and be sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, um, I was talking mm -hmm. to the pre-show, the dreaded double click on the left mouse button. We all know it. Mm -hmm. You've been there if you've had a mouse long enough where you start getting double clicks and you try to drag something, it won't drag, oh. and you're like, oh, what happens? It's the micro switches. So annoying. Yeah, it's just <laughs> sitting there. And this has been a solved problem because what I said in the pre show holds true. Go find your Microsoft mouse from 30 years ago. It still works. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. The micro switches are fine. We figured this out. What? It's the race to the bottom. Plan obsolescence. You know I hate it, so you know I'm cracking these things open. Replacing that cheap switch with one made in Japan like it should have been, like they used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to keep working forever. Oh, that was my weekend project. Jill, I hope to keep it around for at least yeah. another. I, I just don't want stuff in the landfills. Yeah. If I can, don't throw this stuff out. Like, what did I have to know? What do you need for that? You need a little soldering iron. You, do, you pop one back mm -hmm. in. It's a great project like that. It's not about saving money. These things are like 50 bucks a piece. It, trust me, very tempting. Very tempting to just go over to Amazon and go click and just have another yeah. one show up in the mail. But I'm like, no, let's find this and let's figure out how to get this thing apart. I might even post a guide on how to do a little bit of a teardown for it. Oh, that would be you cool. Yeah. Need. <laughs> Some specialized bits to get into it. I might put that up on the uh, interfacing Linux forums. I don't know if that's really worth a video to repair mouse, but I might get it up there to have that information out there. And hopefully, this is going to be the last one I buy for at least the next thirty-one years, Joe. Thirty, yeah, thirty-one. And speaking of thirty-one years, on Friday, uh, August sixteenth of this year, me and Ven's favorite Linux distro turned thirty-one years old. Debian Linux, woohoo! Uh, yes, the granddaddy of them all that, you know, is the backbone and the Swiss Army knife for many Linux distribu distributions, in including Ubuntu Linux. And personally, I've been using Debian since 1993 with the release of the first version 0.01 .01, I got on my brother's BBS back in the day. And it was my second Linux distro that I installed from floppy disks after Slackware Linux. <laughs> Yay! And... Because of all the computer architectures it supports, I have installed Debian, you know, on most of my old and vintage computers in my collection, which keeps those machines happy and running. And I also use it on newer computers with Debian 12 book Bookworm, which I love. In fact, I did today's LWW show notes on one of my Debian 12 rigs. So I love that distro. And Ven uses it for all the things in his studio and to produce the show. I run Arch now. I switched over to Arch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did. I saw that. And, and I saw you put Arch. <laughs> Do you want to talk about, man? Okay. A little side jack for everybody. If you're in our super secret Discord, if you're a patron or if you're on Twitch, like link it up coming out with us. 
for a thing I'm working on, I had to do a little research and I'm like, we're just going to use Manjaro for this because, you know, everybody runs Arch. They secretly just run Manjaro. I get it. I trust me. I learned. And I'm like, Hey, mm -hmm. there's an XFCE spin of Manjaro right there on the page. Yeah. And I'm like, my man, let's, let's just go <laughs> ahead and grab that and put it on. Booted it up. Install was fine. You know, painless, like perfectly sane. It launched XFCE and I'm like, what did they do to my boy? By default. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They customized it. It, it had it. a yeah. transparent <laughs> terminal yeah. in it. It had the whisker menu thing on. I'm like, I don't know you. What are you doing? <laughs> it looked like a diseased version of Gnome 2. Oh, Ben had to put it back in his high what? contrast black nah, and white nah, mode. Nah, nah. <laughs> I just needed a terminal. I needed a terminal. That's all I needed. Yeah. Then, then I'm going to be like, I don't know. Go back and look at those screenshots. I was like, dude, like, whatever's going on in that. Let's get back to Debian because you know what? When you install XFCE and in Debian, it looks mm -hmm. like XFCE. Yes, vanilla XFCE. Done. Or and that's something Debian does, man. You install uh -huh. GNOME, you're like, boom, there's your GNOME. No, okay, you know what? They'll give you a Debian wallpaper. You install yes. KDE. The it's same gonna look like ones yeah. they've had for thirty years. <laughs> well, they update them every year. <laughs> they. They actually, actually do, but I mean, there's still some. They still include some of the older versions, <laughs> you, know, and, you know, the old red and gray one, or red and beige. Yeah, and I think I've been over. Like, I started up with Slack, and I immediately jumped over to Red Hat back in the day. Yeah, and just, you like, went to Red Hat. Stayed on that path, and I jumped uh, from Red Hat to Fedora very begrudgingly. I was very upset when Red Hat's like, "We're no longer making a desktop version." I'm like, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I installed Fedora, and I like I rolled with uh. <laughs> then I went over to. Ubuntu because they had really good multimedia support back in the day because I had a motherboard, I had a UEFI motherboard that nothing would boot on. You know what booted on it? Ubuntu. And I'm mm -hmm. like, there we go. We're going to rock and roll with that. And then as with all good things, it, Ubuntu just got to Ubuntu for me. I found myself doing an Ubuntu install, having to rip out all the stuff I don't need or want and just the cruft for my particular use application. I'm like, let me try this Debian. I haven't just used vanilla Debian. Yeah. Horror stories, right? Or it's like, ah, I have to get installed. I'm like, put it on. I'm like, oh, this, you guys just don't know how to install Linux from back in the day. I got it. It's got a GUI installer. Like, what more do you want? And, you know, did XFC, it's got this lovely little screen when you install uh, for your software. You're like, oh, yes, I would like an SSH server and I would like a desktop manager. Done. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I've always loved that installer. <laughs> Except it installs LibreOffice. A pox upon every distribution <laughs> yeah. that ships Libra off. I'm half joking, but that is like, oh, okay, I'm going to uninstall it. Except for that one time I needed something and like, oh, look, I couldn't get it open. Like Google, whatever the Google mathy bits are. Um, mm. Good times. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I did a little something. I like what to update guides. You know, just update those guides because uh, I've been doing yeah. guides for Linux for 14 years. Now, you might not know anything. Like, wait, what? They've been hidden on a little site called Linux Gamecast. Because, you know, when you're thinking about setting up, uh, you know, your networking stuff or your broadcast audio video stuff, the first place you head to is a Linux gaming site, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I've been moving that stuff over to interfacing Linux a bit at a time because I'm going through it and I'm updating. And a lot of the stuff, you know, if you've ever done any type of uh, guides, installation, stuff like that, documentation in general... Linux can be rough to stay on top of. It can be. And one that I really wanted to update because uh, kind of like leaps and bounds as far as like quality and bandwidth requirement was for NDI. Now, I originally did one for NDI. It allows you to send audio and video over your network connection without a capture card. And I made that video five years ago. It got posted to the yeah. New Tech. You know, New Tech makes the TriCaster. Maybe you've heard of that. They mm -hmm. put it on their website and wrote an article about it. And they're like, hey, look, they did a thing. And like, I'll update this for NDI6. And I did. Throw your capture cards out. Get rid of them. All those, just toss them in the bin. You don't need them anymore. NDI is here to save you. You know what? You probably are still going to, might, might need them for other applications, but you do need a router or a switch, preferably a switch. And look, everybody, that's the internet router. That is the original Linksys with one port that freed us. From switchy switchiness back in the day. Yeah, oh, so old. That thing's old as us. Or, you know, if you like the cosplay home lab stuff, <laughs> easy enough to get it done. 
But if you're in the business of just getting audio and video from one PC to another PC with that quickness, NDIs has got you covered. And like I said, this is a full update to the original one that I did five years ago. And you can do 1080p, 1440p, even 2160p, aka UHD, aka 4K, because I'm bad at maths, streaming with very, very minimum overhead, all for the low, low price of completely free. Yay. Yep. Very little compromise, too. Very little compromise. Let me see. Wiggle grass. I don't even know if you can make that out in the Twitch video. Yeah. On the right side with the NDI. A little bit of artifacting if you yeah, just really a little bit. get in there and zoom. <laughs> Had a good time with it. Um, there's even options to connect your NDI systems to hardware. Like, you can buy a camera with an ether noodle jack in the back, plug it in, NDI, straight out. That's great. You can hook it up to a digital audio workstation. No problem. They make converters that convert NDI to HDMI. They make converters that convert HDMI to NDI. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. Uh, really good piece of software. And one of the big things that I brought up here at the end with my, this is a very small sampling of my capture card collection, but it's all that would fit on the desk, is there's an NDI application for iOS and Android that lets you turn any mobile device, roughly, I mean, you know, if you break out your like Moto G1, it might not work, into a camera mm. that you can use wirelessly and like set it up. Like gives you oh, so much flexibility. Now, would I completely recommend it? Like toss out everything that you got set up? No. Why? First thing, if you want to stick with free, this is only going to be for PC to PC. Okay. That's where you're going to be stuck with that. You're still going to need the capture card for your, you know, gaming consoles and things along those lines. However, if you got a setup like this, where I got to get audio and video back between PCs to PCs, look at it. Maybe think about it as a fallback. You know, if you do have capture cards, have NDI set up, you got plan B. All right, Joe Bryant, let's talk about oh. uh, a little bit of an, some, a, a bit of an Something embarrassment. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Something a little shameful. <laughs> Maybe something we don't want to talk about in polite company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big mean Linux. Walking around, embarrassing Windows 11. <laughs> AMD Ryzen 9000 CPUs. All right. What are we thinking when we hear that? You're like, oh, what did it beat it in 7-zip or Poveri or something like that, right? You're yeah. Like, oh, okay. Like one of the compression benchmarks or like AI something. Sure. Maybe it beat it in that. Nah. <laughs> Nah. You wanna know what a beater did? Joe, what 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 genre of things would you say it uh beat it in? Let's say entertainment. Entertainment, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah. Very accurate. I, I think we could definitely say there's an entertainment segment that the nine thousand series, the ninety seven hundred X on Linux. That's right word. Uh tap danced on the face of Windows eleven and we're talking about video games. Yay! Here's your feel-good story for this week. <laughs> PC Games Hardware did uh, a little Nobara Linux. Nobara. Nobara. Yeah. I want, always wanted to call it Nobra. Benchmark. <laughs> yeah, uh, glorious Egg Rolls Distro. <laughs> Windows 11 uh, 24H2 with the Ryzen 7 9700 and, uh, they, yeah, the 7700. They tested Cybertruck, Red Dead Redemption 2, Horizon Forbidden West, Ghost of Tsushima, and of course, World of Warcraft. And we're looking at the benchmarks in the video version, right? Yeah, really nice. Look at that. Look at, look at 100 uh, frames per second versus... 93. Uh, Wait, 93, okay, yeah. I can hardly read that because it's in yellow. <laughs> 94.6. So, oh, wow. yeah, that's 9700X. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, let's see. That's Cybertruck 2077. Let's go down and take a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm -hmm. So, Nobara 40 clocked in at, uh, and DDR, what are they running this? 8-core, uh, 16 thread. Yeah, 9700X, uh, DDR6400. They send the resolution on this. Uh, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Anyway, we're, we're just gloating. Uh, 176 on yeah. Linux. 158 
uh, uh, see what, oh, that's the different <laughs> ones. That's the 7,700. Okay, there we go. See, they flip these charts up, man. They yeah, need to do a better did. job on that. Yeah. <laughs> 176 on Linux, 156 on Windows 11. There's your apples to wrenches comparison. And what else have we got? Horizon Forbidden. I'm, I'm, I still want to play that. Sony, oh, put this game on sale. Too. I want to play it. <laughs> uh, 130 compared to 119. That's not small. That's that's pretty sweet. This is huge. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> uh, 163 compared to 150. Okay, that's not a decisive, like, you know, that's there's some wiggle room. But And finally, the Y, World of Warcraft. Which this is the smallest performance gain, but it's a, a performance gain across the board at 164 yeah. versus 155. And you're like, well, did it mess up like the uh, 1%? Well, no, the 1%, load, everything's fine. The average frame rate, everything's fine in this. And it's just across the board. How far we've come in oh a span of a decade, in like yeah. 10 years, maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, I, we could argue more or less, but we're not going to get caught up in the details because we're Linux users and we like to do all that infighting. Like, no, let's just talk about the broad message here. We've gone from Linux like barely functioning with the Windows games, and you know, here we are in 2024, where Linux is outperforming Windows 11 by five to ten percent. And it's so AMD amazing, Ben, you know, because that's you know, be because of a compatibility layer that runs Windows games. <laughs> it's not even kind of technically running natively. It's they're being virtualized really and they're still running faster yeah this is just it's just so so exciting look how far the linux kernel has come with the optimizations with amd it's really amazing now that they're you know ahead of of microsoft product <laughs> it's just in gaming that's just a holdout i wanted to put that in i'm sure somebody yeah. is gonna die just dying to pick <laughs> everything apart in the youtube comment section like go for it knock yourself out this is just like it's it's good to see, and it's uh, that gap is probably going to get wider as things go on. It depends on how much more telemetry Microsoft wants to shove into your desktop operating system that you paid them money for, and you can't disable because yeah, Stockholm syndrome. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the show title to prove that it's not clickbait, Joe Bright. Yeah, yeah. So if you want the power of the Raspberry Pi five, but don't need to use all of the four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM for your hobbyist industrial or iot project and would like a cheaper variant then you are in luck there is a new 50 dollars raspberry pi 5 which has been released with two gigabytes of ram the raspberry pi two gigabyte version features a new soc it's actually the broadcom bcm 2712 d0 that is cost optimized so that that that's actually really amazing. You know, they, they did have to make a new uh, chipset for this version so they could bring that cost down by $10. So, and, you know, this combine, combined with the lower memory capacity made the Raspberry Pi 5 2 gig version cheaper to make. And yeah, it's, it's $10 cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 5 4 gigabyte variant, which is, is $60. And uh, actually, we just checked before the show, and the Raspberry Pi 5 2 gig version is available right now from PiShop.us in the United States, the Pi Hut in the UK, ETU in India, and at the Wilectron in Germany. In it's stock. pretty wild. One thing we <laughs> checked uh, before we went, uh, we were live before we started and smash that record button, fam. Oh, mm -hmm. did you see that? Like and subscribe. Or smash that bell, fam. Now, yes. if you're watching on YouTube, it, it should make the little thing dance. Yeah, yes, that's right. <laughs> Have fun with that. Uh, I'm sure I will not be abusing that this Saturday. Stay tuned. So this is definitely aimed at people uh, happy to shave off uh, you know, like the yeah. unneeded resources and save that extra bit of money. But yeah. like before the show, we, we popped over the old Amazon, you know, the company store, if you will. And we're like, how much is a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig? Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig right now. Uh, down the line at Amazon is ten dollars more. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh, uh, those prices. Uh, hopefully, they'll get uh, changed up a bit. And let's talk about the price because I looked it up. I, I did a little bit of math. Uh, the launch price of the Pi, the original Raspberry Pi, that little one gig one that we all read out and bought, and we're like, yeah, 
it was rough back then because there wasn't a lot of software for like what do i do with this uh and mine was like can i get it to boot x i'm like yes uh, yes <laughs> then it went in a box uh back in 2012 35 bucks so yeah you take 2012 uh 35 us wet sneaky caches uh that's equivalent to about 47.95 in 2024 yeah oh, so it, they're pretty, pretty close, close. Yeah. pretty close and uh one thing i'm curious about since they lobotomized this chip do I still need an active cooler on it? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Now, who are they really making these for? Uh, they're industrial partners. Yeah, industrial IoT. Okay, what are yeah. you, what, what you going to do? With, I mean, yes, I, listen, I understand. <laughs> There's somebody out there with a use case for a $50 2 gig Raspberry Pi. The rest of it, because once you start getting down to 2 gigs, having, you know, if you're going to be doing everything headless, like, you're good to go. Like, sure, yeah. great option. Yeah. Then you get the software ecosystem. You know, that's where I will champion Raspberry Pi each and every time, even though I got some problems with some other stuff. Uh, it, that'll get you in the door right there. Keep these in stock. That's good. I'm still trying <laughs> to get a hold of that N1, N1000, <laughs> N100, whatever. N1, is it N1000 or N100? I need to memorize that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the uh, Intel CPU. The Ragsta. The Ragsta. Yeah. R-A-D-X-A. Ragsta. Yeah. Ragsta. <laughs> What's this degree? It's a dumb name. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, you'll need to fix your uh, SSL uh, certificate on your web zone, man. Come on. Get that, uh, I'm trying to get in, in touch with them to be like, I'd like to buy one. I've been trying to buy one. They've been out of stock. You're like, not really. I'm like, just, just send me one. I'll send you money. Send me a review copy and I'll pay you for it. We'll see yeah, if I can get one in for great. interfacing Linux. I got a gang of things I want to play around with, but. Hey, if uh, you like the show, you want to help out, mm -hmm. head over to Linux Gamecast. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff. So, like I said, Linux Gamecast, been doing that for a long time. This, I've uh, been doing that for a long time, too. We got support, Patreon, best way to do it, Libra Pay, PayPal. But if you can join on Patreon, I know uh, at a couple of people, like something was wonky with the RSS feed because if you join up as a patron, mm -hmm. we got a pre pre super shows, in, which we do on Saturday, which is like our production meeting and that's the only place to get that so you can you know get a custom rss feed put it in your podcatcher and you get it and that wasn't going through another thing we throw in there i think i got it sorted we'll find out is the live and uncut version of these shows because i try to keep uh, weekly daily wednesdays trimmed down to about 25 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. but we're usually here for like at least an hour an hour and 20 yeah. minutes so if you want that pre-show and post-show mixed in with a regular show you get the uncut mm -hmm. version we do the uh, YouTube video version. You get that a week early. And uh, of course, you get it in podcast format as a patron. So yeah, a bunch of stuff we throw in access to the show notes. Uh, Discord, come say hi. Or not. You can be like, Kanichiwa. That's a great way to come in. Fight mm -hmm. with me, six. It's a brilliant time. <laughs> Love to have you. And hey, come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays, where I'm there hosting our private Trek mania server that we stream publicly, but everyone's invited to join. If you're a Twitch sub or a patron hop in it's physics puzzle platforming. We have a great time doing it and it is a new maps every week. Great conversation. Scott yeah. was in last night and we were grilling Scott because Scott is our resident video game developer. And we're like, Hey, how do the physics work when you tie it to the frame? And we're, and we're trying to do very complex maps too. It's hilarious to watch. Yeah. Trying hilarious to, to uh, participate in. Yeah. Yeah. A technical conversation when you're trying to focus on driving. That's great. It's a great strategy. If you don't want somebody to win, just ask them a hard question. All right. Lovely people. Have a great rest of your week. It's time to get out of here. So let's bring up the music. Yeah. Roll some credits. <laughs> Yay. Happy music. Our advisors, Art Theron. Yay. We love you, Art Theron. Our executive producers, 12345, Ian, Eship, KR Decky, drummer. Our Chicago kicks people level hit Basil empty cataclysm. Our sea monsters, uh, Veritanuda, Truggy, Mike. Our Death Notes, Martin, Renee, Nubbin, Turnover. Our Chairlings, Greg, Douglas, Thomas, Martin, <laughs> Rohit. <laughs> Aw, love you all. <laughs> See you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>